The Batman takes place in a brand new version of Gotham City, which is completely different to the one seen in the DC Extended Universe features Batman vs Superman, Justice League, and Birds of Prey. Matt Reeves' vision for the urban jungle is very much a grimy, dark place, where it always seems to be raining. The setting matches the equally moody new version of Batman, who protects the innocent from the hordes of criminals who move through all corners of the city. When the Riddler starts his war on corruption within the ranks of Gotham's political, financial, and law enforcement spheres, Bruce Wayne has to dive headfirst into a sprawling mystery that stretches from the mayor's office to the bowels of the seedy Iceberg Lounge. The Riddler's brutal game reveals some devastating truths about the city, and it even forces Bruce to grapple with his family's legacy. Thomas and Martha Wayne's memories were tarnished, both in the eyes of the public and Bruce by the time the credits roll. Mainly due to the Riddler revealing Thomas Wayne tried to keep the lid on Martha's mental illness treatment at Arkham Asylum, which ultimately spiraled out to including Carmine Falcone. None of this matters to the citizens of Gotham, who must fight for survival when the Riddler bombs the seawall, flooding most of the city. To make matters worse, the Caped Crusader has to battle a number of the villain's faithful followers inside the roof of Gotham Arena as they try to shoot crowds of survivors. It's a dramatic final battle that sees Batman fighting the Riddler's violent ideology as embodied by his followers, and the fight nearly gets the better of him. But thankfully, the Bat has a surprising weapon in his utility belt. During the fight on the arena's railings, Things go from bad to worse for the Bat when he ends up on his back after taking numerous shots from Riddler's followers. Unfortunately, one of the shooters takes the opportunity to attack Selina Kyle, who tries to stop the gang from committing mass murder. For a moment, it looks like one of them might kill her, which causes Bruce to pull a small vial of green liquid out of his utility belt and inject it. This green liquid gives Batman a much-needed adrenaline boost energizing him to the degree that he can save Selina and finish the battle for Gotham's soul. But that mysterious liquid is never actually addressed, leaving us to wonder what exactly the Bat injected. It's hard not to see it as a nod towards the classic villain, Bane. DC fans will know that the muscled behemoth uses a green formula called Venom to give him enhanced strength and speed in a fight. It typically gives him a brutal edge over his opponents, not unlike the burst of ferocious energy Bruce gets in the final showdown near the end of the Batman. This leaves audiences with a few questions that we annoyingly don't get the answers to, including, has Batman already crossed paths with Bane, or is he out there in the world waiting for his chance to strike? Will Bane show up in a sequel to the Batman, should that next movie ever be greenlit? Probably not. The green liquid Bruce Wayne uses in the final fight is not a big enough easter egg to suggest the man who broke the bat is coming to Gotham anytime soon. Plus, Matt Reeves has already opened up about what he'd like to do with a second film if Warner Brothers gives him the go-ahead, and it doesn't sound like the hulking figure is involved in the director's vision. In a recent interview with Collider, Reeves explained that when it comes to DC characters, he wants to find the most grounded way of telling their stories. He went on to say he already has an idea of how to adapt one of the most iconic villains in Batman's rogues gallery, Mr. Freeze. Plus, after the Riddler is safely in custody, he speaks with his next-door cellmate, and while he never mentions a name, it's fairly obvious this character, played by Barry Keoghan, is supposed to be the newest version of the Joker. So, while this is great news for fans wanting more from Reeves' contributions to the DCEU, don't expect to see Bane go up against Robert Pattinson's version of the Cape Crusader anytime soon. Now is not the time for fear. That comes later. With the director's grounded approach to comic book storytelling, it probably wouldn't be a good idea to use Bane anyway, since Christopher Nolan already delivered a realistic version of the villain played by Tom Hardy in 2012's The Dark Knight Rises. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about the Batman are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.